Hello everybody, welcome to episode 5 of the Altengrad series. In the last episode we have been doing the edge, the first edge of the old town. We have created some more modern looking buildings and we also built this wide street with the trams and two intersections right in front of the old city gates. Now from this intersection in particular we also have a road that's uh, going towards the river where I want to build some kind of a bridge. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're going to build a bridge with some detailing around it. Now, this uh, terrain situation that we have in here, it, uh, it means that we need to create some sort of a slightly tall bridge. Now, it would be fine to create some kind of an old historical bridge, even though I really wanted to create something slightly more uh, recently constructed, maybe in the 19th century or maybe even early 20th century. So I was, uh, I was just experimenting with all kinds of uh, things I have uh, downloaded from the workshop, some kind of uh, bridge assets, uh, either for procedural objects or just props or something like that. But then I decided that I'm going to do something really modern for this age. I took inspiration from a real-life bridge which was opened in 1910. So in this time period, something rel relatively recently constructed. Now it's going to be a steel uh, truss beam bridge. You can see that I'm already trying to create the basic basic uh, shape of it using this, uh, this truss beam that I downloaded from the workshop. Now this bridge, this bridge I believe was made by Jaron Nebel, not sure if I pronounce it right, and uh, it was made so that it will be upside down. Uh, you can see that it has uh, the room for two pillars and it has the beam kind of elevated above the rest of the structure in there. And I wanted to have it exactly the, the other way around. I wanted to have it flat on the top because it's going to be, uh, I'm not sure how it's called in English, basically it means that the structure is underneath the, the place for people, right? That the entire structure is going to be underneath that. So we need to we need to flip it upside down, the bridge, the, the structure, the steel structure, and uh, flatten the top and kind of uh, do some changes to the to the underside of it. Now we also need to pick some kind of a network uh, to put on the top. I first wanted to try just the regular vanilla uh, vanilla road for trams in the middle, but it, I didn't really like it. I especially don't like, uh, even for this time period, I don't think that it will look good with uh, those vanilla uh, concrete edges of the bridge, uh, bridge segments. So I went into the workshop, uh, sorry, went into the road editor and I just did some modifications to this road in here. This road, this road is from the workshop. It's basically a four lane road with the two lanes uh, in the middle for trams only. Well, not trams only, I think like uh, ambulances and all that can also use it, but uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, that road has very, very narrow uh, sidewalks. So I made them wider and I also got rid of uh, the, the concrete uh, that's uh, going to be displayed on the side. It's not really super necessary, but it would put the concrete on the ground in the river. Now, I'm obviously using the ground version of this road, so I also had to make sure that uh, this road is not going to pull the terrain uh, towards the road, because obviously it would be impossible for me to do it over the water. So that's kind of, you know, clear how it needed to be done. And it was even easy to do in the workshop, uh, sorry, in the road editor. I keep saying workshop for the road editor, but obviously I mean road editor. Now I put only a couple of buildings on the opposite side of the river, just I think a school or something, so that we can have uh, some people walking on the sidewalks in here, so that we can judge the width of uh, of the sidewalks in here and put the put the railings there accordingly. So that's exactly what I'm doing in here and just filling with procedural objects, filling the sidewalks with some concrete. I'm going to I'm going to keep it as concrete, even though this might not be concrete in the game. It's kind of difficult to judge just by having the texture there, what kind of material it is, if it's just a standard concrete or some kind of a pavement material, but uh, given that uh, it's uh, it's a relatively recently constructed bridge, I don't think that cobblestone on the sidewalks there would be nice. And it's kind of an excuse for me, obviously, to not do cobblestone because it's really difficult to do so in the game. So we are now moving towards the supports of the bridge. And in here I decided to use these uh, pillars from the railway mod or the pack that comes together with the railway replacement mod. Now these pillars are supposed to be for railroads and they are obviously uh, supposed to be uh, narrower than this, but I'm just using two 
and uh, putting them obviously side by side to create the supports in here. I'm using this version with uh, the with the bricks, with the red bricks uh, for the pillars in the middle of the span, or you know, in not the side supports. Let's say it like this. And for the side support, I'm just going to do in this episode this one side support on this part of the river. The other side of the river, I'm just going to keep for some later later episodes when we finally move there with the city expansion. But for now, we are just going to focus on this part of the river in here. So I basically got rid of the the brick part of uh, of that uh, of those pillars in here for the side supports. But it was pretty much just an experiment until I. I was sure how to do this, uh, this 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 part of the support. Now that's just the lower part of the support, but we need to also deal with the upper part. You can see it in here that I'm also using a different kinds of bridges, uh, bridge props, obviously turned into procedural objects, so I can manipulate them and basically treating them as retaining walls. So. I built the bridge first, as you would normally, I guess, and uh, so the arches, and then I filled the arches with uh, the flat surfaces again, so that it looks like a retaining wall. This is something that I have seen quite a lot in real life, because these uh, supports for the bridges usually are ornamented in some way. They are usually also built using recycled materials. Uh, when I say recycled, I probably mean from uh, maybe like a bridge that used to be in this place, uh, old, really old bridge, or just some other stones, uh, stones from all parts, all kinds of parts of the city. Anyway, we just build it like this, and now we need to create some sort of uh, connections between the different levels of of the of this place. We, I'm going to have, I think, two or three levels in here. Well, three levels if you count the the top one, where we have the the trams, so that uh, we can we can obviously put more buildings in here and kind of have it nicer. So. There's going to be a level right by the river, which I'm not really going to build today. I was thinking of building maybe like a very, very old, uh, not good looking industrial area, light industrial area that might get destroyed in the future as we move forward in time or something, something different. I'm not really sure about it just yet, but uh, this middle level in here is probably going to be some residential buildings. I really wanted to put some sort of a road right uh, right uh, on the side of this support in here, this, this brick part of the end of the bridge, but uh, it occurred to me why not use these bridges as an actual bridge and have uh, have uh, the two arches open and have the road go through them. So I just use the one lane road in each direction to go like that. Now, because we are still in the time period when bridges were really important to the city, well, they are obviously still important today, but back in the day they were more so, so that they were decorated. They were decorated quite a lot with all kinds of statues and all kinds of ornamentations and stuff like that. So I decided to put these statues in here, exactly where the steel part of the bridge starts. So we are extending the, the support, the start of the support, let's say, with these different kinds of pillars. And they are going to form some sort of a, a support only for the statues. The statues on both sides are the same. I'm not sure if I'm going to do them the same on the opposite side of the river. Probably, yeah, maybe just with different different type of, of the support or something something else entirely. I'm not really sure. I Like I said, I'm going to do the same, uh, the, the other part of the bridge uh, in, in some really distant future. So not right now. So now for the stairs. I really wanted to have uh, very similar looking materials, very similar looking surfaces on the bridge and even on, uh, let's say, the retaining walls for these uh, for these uh, stair areas in here. So I used the bridge in here as well as uh, as, the, as the support area. Again, some sort of a retaining wall, uh, you know, some sort of retaining wall function for them as well. I don't think I'm going to fill the arches this time, or maybe I am, I'm not really sure. You will see that in the cinematics. But uh, it really looks nice, and it was very, very popular to do this kind of ornamentation for these uh, retaining walls like this, to basically create these arches, and then either fill them uh, like very uh, at the same level, let's say, at the same surface level, but uh, you can also have it a bit sunken into the wall with some kind of some kind of arches, or maybe you can even have some build buildings like shops or warehouses inside these arches. It's actually very popular with. Uh, some retaining walls right, uh, right next to rivers, for example, to have uh, arch retaining walls, and inside the arches you might have 
some sort of tiny little shops or I don't know these times these days like galleries or whatever so maybe maybe we could actually create something like that in the future as we move forward in time we could have these places uh, reconstructed refurbished into some more modern modern uh, looking stuff but anyway I'm kind of uh, going ahead obviously in here because that's still that's still going to take us some time before we reach that time so we need to deal with uh, the rest of the area around the bridge because the bridge is kind of done it was not really all that super difficult to do it uh, the steel part of the bridge was done uh, really fast although obviously again the most uh, difficult part is always the decision making how to do it but then it's kind of clear how it needs to be done and it goes very fast so the rest of the area is going to be very very open because it makes sense we are again like I said in the previous episode at the edge of the old town which means that there probably used to be some city walls and not much else so when the city walls got destroyed we got uh, we got just a very open space instead of it that means that uh, right by the intersection the tram intersection that we created we're going to create some sort of a some sort of a park with fountain later I'm going to going to build it and uh, right by the right by the bridge on the sides of the bridge we're gonna have these stairs and uh, on the opposite sides again some sort of open areas as well so as you can see just uh, just a detailing uh, putting all kinds of paths in here I'm not sure actually that I uh, that I built a proper pedestrian paths uh, through these uh, stairs I think I forgot to do that you probably you will probably have to double check with me with in the cinematics but I think I actually forgot to put pedestrian paths on these stairs this time so that's something that I need to that I need to add for for the future expansion of the city so we have uh, some sort of building block uh, in this in this side in here not really sure when it might have been constructed probably not super recently there might have been some buildings where the bridge is now and they probably got destroyed maybe there used to be some different bridge uh, maybe lower towards the river maybe from the lowest lowest level where I'm planning to build some kind of a uh, not so good looking area maybe or when I get some different ideas something else probably but there might have been some different bridge but when the city walls got destroyed and people started realizing that uh, instead of the city walls there's probably going to be some sort of a very very important uh, main avenue main street uh, through this through, through this part of the city it probably would make more sense to have a bridge a connection over the water which is going to be on the same level as this main street now the old bridge was probably built like i said uh, lower probably a lot lower so in, into so to reach it from this from this level that we are looking at right now you would need to go you know down and it wouldn't be all that super comfortable for cars and all that in this time period so that's probably when plans for a new bridge which would start at a much higher level right from the level of the street uh, the plans probably started happening so at least that's uh, some sort of uh, you know explanation or justification for building a bridge like this not that I really need it I'm just going to build a bridge and uh, you know whatever but uh, it's kind of nice to think about it this way anyway so we are building the park with the fountain already you can see that I'm trying to put some surfaces in there because it is a rounded uh, area so I decided to use this uh, uh, well it's not a decal it's a network that has this uh, nice looking cobblestone texture now because it's a network I can obviously make it into a circle but this game doesn't really uh, give you nice circles so I had to use some props to create some sort of some sort of a uh, aiming uh, aiming cross uh, aiming cross whatever and uh, build a proper proper circle inside of it and then place it where the fountain was and it actually turned out looking uh, looking good looking round which was obviously most most important thing I'm later going to decorate it put all kinds of flowers in there and just make it make it look really nice uh, that place uh, in that place I did put pedestrian paths but uh, unfortunately people are not really going there so I'm probably going to put some park people generator in there later but in the cinematics it's going to be a bit uh, empty doing just some tiny little changes to these uh, to this retaining wall up here I'm using the, the stone texture instead of uh, well actually the brick texture for for that instead of the stone texture because it kind of looked uh, more similar to what we built for 
the bridge itself. And we also need to build some sort of stairs on this side of the bridge. Uh, in here, I don't really want to build all that super fancy stairs. And also, we don't need to cover that much elevation. So only single stairs in here with obviously a railing and uh, some surfaces to, to go with it. I'm later going to decorate uh, this place a lot more. Just some benches and uh, street lights and all those kinds of things. I'm not really showing it in here because... Uh, I just don't really want to focus on that too much, but rather rather focus on these things, how how it's actually all built under underneath it. Now, I also had to build, uh, that's kind of a unwanted side effect of uh, doing that, uh, the widening for the sidewalks on that custom road on the bridge. If you're going to connect it to something else, some kind of a different road, and the roads don't properly match with the width, the overall width of the entire road, then you're going to have some very, very weird glitches with uh, the connecting sidewalks. So that's why I had to create like a fake intersection there with those tiny little segments of those uh, of those concrete uh, paths to the sides and uh, so so that we can have crosswalks uh, sorry so that we can have uh, intersection there and the sidewalks are not really going to match but we can then you know uh, create some custom curbs and all that and make it look like it actually is fine but it's not really so that's something that I'm gonna have to deal with on the opposite side of the river as we go forward I'm also somewhat extending the tram line just by just by a few tens of meters really just creating this little intersection in here finishing it with all the decals on the side in here and this was actually a very very difficult thing to do because this road in here that I'm doing and I'm detailing is, is sloped quite a lot and uh, these uh, these uh, background textures for uh, the our the underground textures not underground uh, uh, I don't know how to how to call them basically the cobblestone for underneath the railroad uh, I need to I need to customize it uh, a bit more in the road editor so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't wobble when you put it up and down different modes and all that so Whatever, it's just, it was just difficult to put those kinds of textures underneath all that. Uh, you're gonna have to trust me that it was really difficult. It doesn't really look like it from the from the time lapses, does it? But uh, yeah, it was. Anyway, uh, we're going to definitely extend the city in that direction. Obviously, where the tram goes, the city needs to go there as well in the future. So we're gonna have some modern-looking building blocks in that uh, direction, but don't really have any specific plans for it just yet. So, as you can see, finishing up uh, this place, putting a lot of flowers, a lot of decorations in there, a lot of trees, uh, different kinds of props, and so on. And it doesn't look all that bad at all, so kind of satisfied with this place. This place is definitely going to benefit a lot from, from all kinds of trees and bushes and all kinds of these green decorations. It's going to look really, really good, if I may say so myself. But uh, we also need to do some uh, uh, some different kinds of uh, uh, trees in terms of, or not trees, but flowers and decorations in terms of props. Uh, I'm not using in this series the prop snapping, uh, sorry, uh, tree snapping mod, which means that every time, every time I create a fake surface, I need to use only props to cover the planters with something. So uh, I think that's the only uh, bush or flowers that I have as props and not trees. So I can move them up and down with Move It, obviously, and they can be on those planters because underneath those planters, the terrain obviously goes uh, lower. So the flowers would not even be visible in those planters. That's kind of a shame because I was thinking that this city is not really going to use the tree snapping mod because I'm not really going to do these kinds of uh, detailing projects where we might use that mod and I'm probably going to benefit more from the unlimited trees mod. Obviously those two mods are incompatible, probably saying that in every single episode where I talk about these mods so we probably already remember so the bottom line is that uh, I just need to do something something else and probably not do these kinds of uh, projects in the future all that much because I just won't be able to detail them. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. Thank you guys for watching episode 5 of Altengrad. We built the bridge, we did a lot of detailing, a lot of procedural objects in today's episode and not that many buildings, but that's nice. It was a, it was a nice change from all the city building in the previous episode. So again, thank you guys for watching today's episode. I hope you liked it. If you did, then you can always put a thumbs up underneath the video, share the video with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I will see you with some future videos. Take care and goodbye.